Daily Tech News Show is made possible by you, the listener. Thanks to all of you, including Steve Iadarola, Jeffrey Zilks, Kriya Artem, and Don McDonald. On this episode of DTNS, we're live from Antarctica, or at least Craig is, and he'll tell us all about the tech down there. There's a lot, plus just the things you'll care about from Apple's earnings report and Bluetooth from space. This is the Daily Tech News for Friday, May 3rd, 2024 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Animal House, I'm Sarah Lane. Drawing the top tech stories. In Cleveland, I'm Len Peralta. And I'm producing the show today. I'm Amos. Amos, where are you? I'm in Alaska. That's important because we also have with us Craig Porter, lead power plant mechanic at McMurdo Station in Antarctica. Welcome, Craig. Well, thank you. I'm, yeah. I'm happy to be here and uh, and speak to everybody. Yeah, we We're are so excited uh, to have you. And contrary to popular belief, Antarctica and Alaska not the same place. Yeah, no, I in wanted fact, the Alaska far away from each other. I wanted the uh, the juxtaposition there of like our show is spanning the globe almost entirely, but from top to bottom in this case. Yeah, yeah, with a little yes. angle to yeah. it too. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You you may have caught the episode last month uh, where we had an excerpt of my interview with Craig uh, from a word with Tom Merritt. But uh, after we did that and the tech all checked out, we said. Uh, Let's try having you on live. And uh, here we are, you know, so far so good. Thank you, Craig, for making this work. Well, and thank you to, uh, you know, thank you to the, the government and thank you to Starlink and and thank you to the NSF and the U USAP for uh, for uh, allowing me to do this. You yeah, know, yeah, I, I absolutely. Don't speak for them. Um, I don't speak for them. I am not a representative, but um you know, it, it's a, uh, it's it's a privilege to be on the show today. Excellent, excellent. We're going to talk to Craig a little bit about the technology that he uses and some of his experiences at McMurdo Station in Antarctica. But let's start with the quick hits. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration has qualified Apple's atrial fibrillation history feature to be the first digital health technology to join the Medical Device Development Tools Program, a.k.a. MDDT. Atrial fibrillation, or AFib, as you might have heard it uh, being called, is an indicator of heart disease um, and something that has to be monitored. The MDD program means that the Apple Watch can be used in clinical studies that need data and how much time the wearer spends in AFib fib and then possibly help them out. China's Chang'e 6 mission will attempt to become the second to land on the far side of the moon. It has launched. It will attempt to collect and return two kilograms of material from the moon's oldest impact crater, the South Pole Aitken Basin. Chang'e 5 already brought back 1.73 kilograms, but that was from the near side, the visible side of the moon. That happened in 2020. This mission carries instruments from France, Italy, Pakistan, and Sweden. And like the material brought back in 2020, it will be shared with the international community for study. Back on December 11th, Epic won its court case against Google regarding Google's Play Store rules, and the judge will now issue a ruling on how Google must comply with this decision. Epic filed a request, including being able to offer a third-party app store with no fees, getting access to the Play Store's catalog of apps for six years, and end to all agreements, incentives, and deals, and a lot more. Google says the list goes far beyond the scope of the trial verdict and would put users' security and privacy at risk. For example, it might require Google to tell all third-party app stores which apps a user has installed without that user's permission. The company says the remedies are unnecessary since it's settled with U.S. attention attorneys general to no longer sign wide-ranging exclusivity agreements. <clears throat> Next step, the judge will consider the filings from both companies and issue a decision of what remedies it will actually order. Reddit user Halfstar had noticed that an SSL certificate was created for search.chatgpt.com, implying that OpenAI is about to launch some kind of search product at that URL. Now, this could just be a search of ChatGPT's own website, uh, but a lot of folks expect OpenAI to create a search engine based on its large language models, so it could also be that. A lot of people have pointed to the neurons Pete Huang posting on X that domain and the date May 9th, but there's no evidence that that is based on anything. He didn't give a link or any other supporting material, so who knows? I suppose that we can put that post to the test in about six days. 
Redditor, oh, it's Tom, which I don't believe is you, Tom. Oh, it's not. Tom. Mm. Okay. Oh, it's not Tom Merritt, but oh, it's Tom. Took screenshots from Spotify version 1.2.36, showing lossless streaming options up to 1,411 kilobits per second and called enhanced listening. Might be Spotify's lossless feature is finally close to launching. A lot of people would be happy about that. A lot of people are also happy, well, maybe not so happy about the <laughs> Apple earnings report. Yeah, I guess it depends on uh, where you stand on this. So let's let's run through some numbers. There's a lot of news coming out of uh, Apple earnings announcement. Uh, those numbers came in just as we finished DTNS yesterday. So we're talking about them today. So let's break down the stuff we care about as consumers. We'll start with the bad news. Uh, this is what you're going to see in the headlines. Overall revenue down 4% iPhone sales fell 10% on the year. Uh, other products, that's the Apple Watch, AirPods, et cetera, down 10% on the year. iPads down 17%, but new ones coming. So expect that one to bump up next quarter. Uh, slow sales in China have also been a concern and Chinese sales were down 8%. So you can't write off the overall decline on China. However, iPhone sales still grew there. We also have some some good news. Again, looking at the numbers, services sales rose 14.2%. That's your Apple Music, Apple TV+, iCloud, Apple Fitness, Search, Licensing, etc. As Apple is pivoting to being a services-based company, which it's been doing uh, pretty methodically for some time now, $23.9 billion coming from services is great news. That puts half of iPhones 45.9 billion and well ahead of the other categories, which are all below $10 billion. Uh, Mac sales also rose 4%. Uh, not a huge bump, but hey, Mac sales, you know, ha have have uh, have dropped uh, in many quarters past. This has continued all good news all around with M series processors, especially new M3 MacBook Airs um, uh, being suspected to be on the horizon. Uh, well, no, the M3 MacBook Airs are all already out, right? I think the, I think that's that's one of the. the Sorry, I meant the, the I, <laughs> M3, M4. Yeah, I know. I've I've got Apple on the brain. Yes, M4 <laughs> iPads, uh, possibly on the horizon next week. All right, so let's get to the takeaways. Apple says if it wasn't for a surge in sales last year after supply chain constraints eased, sales would be flat or they'd be up even. It also name checked emerging markets. So I have been saying they really need to start paying attention to other markets besides China. And they mentioned India, Saudi Arabia, Mexico, Turkey, Brazil, and Indonesia by name as places that they are looking at for growth. Uh, there were no numbers specifically shared for the Apple Vision Pro, but Apple talked up its corporate uses. Another thing I've been saying is Apple doesn't care if they sell a lot of these at retail. Uh, what they care about is can they get enough of these in the enterprise to keep it going as a possible business? And they said on the earnings call that half of the Fortune 500 or Fortune 100 companies, so presumably around 50, uh, have purchased Apple Vision Pro units. All right. Given the bad, the good, and the takeaways here, uh, how how do we as present or possibly potential customers of Apple products uh, feel about these announcements? Uh, let's start with the Apple Vision Show host, Sarah. How, how are you looking at these? Um, so there are a lot of tea leaves to read as far as this uh, quarterly earnings report um, has, has told us is what's going on with the company services rising. Great news. That's what Apple wants. Um, uh, hardware, uh, sales declining, not great news, certainly. But again, there, you know, there was a time where it was like iPhone, eh, iPad, Mac, you know, they were, they were, they were in there, you know, and then everything else was sort of like a long game bet. We're now at the point where Apple doesn't have to rely as much on, you know, anything in its hardware line, but specifically the iPhone, even though um, if the iPhone continued to decline in, you know, big markets like China, where it's had some issues lately for a variety of reasons, that is that that's a whole thing. When it comes to the Vision Pro and uh, Apple being pretty cagey about numbers, uh, meaning that we really don't know, you know, what's going on there besides, you know, rumors of Apple uh, pulling back um, uh, production 
production, um, which indicates that not enough people want to buy uh, these units and also the resale market, um, having Vision Pros for less than what they would retail for new, to know that Apple is saying, okay, well, hey, Fortune 100 companies, again, didn't give a lot of information. We, we, got, a, we got a few little anecdotes um, in their uh, investor call afterwards, but you know, to say like 50, 50 of those companies have bought Vision Pros. Did they buy 100? Did they buy one? Did they buy five? Again, we don't know, but that indicates that this product was never really supposed to be a consumer product. So how do you feel though? Like as, a, as, a, as an Apple user, how do you feel? I don't know. Uh, I, I mean, I feel like this is laying the groundwork for it to succeed. Um, I don't not know. Not just about the Vision Pro, but you're like, hey, you know what? Does, doesn't does really matter. It seems like Apple's not going anywhere, right? Well, Apple's not going anywhere. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, that. I, it, listen, if I was upset and worried, you would know. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Ap <laughs> Apple is not going to be like, well, I guess we just don't have enough money to make a new iPhone. <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> let's scrap that September announcement. So you're like, not worried. You're Apple's like, Apple's like, doing oh, its no. thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think if we had, if we have a few down quarters, um, that, you know, that, that, uh, precede this, then, then let's talk. But otherwise... You know, I, I've always sort of wondered why, you know, Apple, you know, record breaking announcements, revenue better than ever every quarter. It's like that's not sustainable for any company. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Craig, I know you're not a big Apple user, uh, and, but from the other side of the fence, how does this look to you? Well, I I can only speak for myself, of course, but of course, it, I don't outside of, you know, listening to to a daily tech news show. I don't care about, uh, you know, earnings calls and things like that. I'm not an investor yeah. in these companies. Mm -hmm. A lot of I people don't. don't. Yeah. And it, it's, it seems that the thing that people are most interested in when they're talking about hardware or about companies is, oh, do you have the new iPhone 16? Or how do you like that Pixel Fold? How do you like that, that Samsung uh, Galaxy Flip or whatever? Um, earnings, you know, it's not like, oh, I see you have the the Google Fold. Did you did you hear about their stock price? You know, people don't talk that way. Hmm. And so I, I think for for a lot of users, the the earnings calls don't mean anything. I think what a lot of people are looking for is, you know, like your your Marcus Brownleys and your your people who get hands on and you know live with it, you know, uh, extended time with a product, you know, outside of your, your fan people who will buy it right now just to have it. I think, and especially with today's economy, uh, people are, have to be more efficient with their money and their purchases, and they have to think and plan more about what they're going to buy. You know, there's not, a lot of people don't have a ton of disposable income these days. And so, mm. you know, you know, in, in, in earnings call, is not what people are looking for. They're looking for how is this going to add value to my life? How yeah. long will I able, be able to keep this phone or this tablet or computer without having to worry about upgrading? Um, so yeah, and and I'm you know I'm not anti Apple or anything. I have an iPad. I have an iPhone at home as as a backup phone, or for when I go on motorcycle trips and things like that. So I have. I have my fingers in both ecosystems, um, but you know, I'm I'm not I'm I'm using like a generation or two behind the current because that's when I can afford to buy. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and well, I think no, Craig, I, I like you, you, you you speak for a lot of people when you say you know the, the earning stuff is if you're you know if you're in any sort of financial capacity of tech, yeah, maybe you do care, um, you know, or maybe you care as an investor, if you know, if that's, that's where you're coming from. But for the average consumer, it's more of like, what's the newest and coolest thing? And how much will it cost? And I think what yes. we can take from earnings calls as consumers is, uh, does it look like they're going to keep making this line? Is that a line that's successful? So I'm going to see more options. Uh, is this because it's not selling something that's going to go away like the Apple Vision Pro and I shouldn't pay attention? So that's what I'm trying to present here is Apple Vision Pro is not going away. They're, they've got a different plan in mind. Uh, iPhones, you know what? 
they they are not selling as well in China, but they're selling fine. Uh, and it, we're going to see new iPads coming next week. Uh, so this is more of like, is the company that I shop with uh, doing well? Uh, and what are the trends? What are the things that make me think, oh, they're going to do more of that? And that's why I, I always mention the services, because Apple is really trying to pivot to services to make up that money that they lose from maturing product lines. iPhone's a maturing product line. Don't expect to see a lot new from the iPhone. I, I have a feeling that what they're going to try to do to rejuvenate the iPhone is give us a lot of AI stuff, a lot of software stuff at WWDC to yeah. sell us uh, later later on in the year. That's the kind of stuff you look for from the earnings call as a consumer. Uh, and it's why we didn't give you a whole lot of dollar amounts here, because it really doesn't matter that much what the sales are. It's more the trend lines, the percentages. Is it going up? Is it going down? What are the stuff they're going to keep making? What are the stuff we're going to see them changing? And that's a and that's a great point because uh, and I'm sorry if we need to move on, but I just thought of something. It's like it as as the mature markets have reached saturation, quote unquote. You know, the the companies have to pivot to to something else, and maybe introducing new services or new devices or whatever in these less saturated markets that'll give us a preview into what we could expect to see in a saturated market to try to get people to move over you know from mm -hmm. one ecosystem to the other ecosystem you know 100%. yeah that's a great point all right. Well, a company called Hubble Network, uh, and this might be on your radar already, Craig, has demonstrated the first Bluetooth connection to a satellite, successfully receiving a Bluetooth transmission from 600 kilometers above the Earth. The satellite uses a phased array antenna that acts like a magnifying glass for faint signals. Then potential use cases include cattle tracking, remote assets, asset monitoring, like uh, an oil pump, soil temperature monitoring, things like that. Existing Bluetooth chipsets would need a firmware upgrade to communicate with the satellite. So there's a little bit uh, that has to go into infrastructure here. But two more satellites will go up later this year to create a four satellite beta constellation with an eventual 32 satellites going up in late 2025 or early 2026 to provide the full network capable of connections for two to three hours per day anywhere in the world. Yeah, uh, so so this is a, a big uh, advance. It, it's the magnifying glass effect and some math uh, to account for Doppler effects over range, but they're they're really tweaking out the range and it takes a lot of equipment on the satellite end to, to make this work. Uh, that's why my Bluetooth doesn't last the whole house, but they can go up into space. Uh, and, and Craig, I could see this potentially being useful where you are at McMurdo Station, but you know we were talking before the show about you know questions about how exactly you could implement it. What do you think? Well, uh, I think that you know as I think about it more, you know I've kind of been thinking about it you know during the show, and there are a lot of applications that I think that this would be really useful. Maybe not uh, at the maybe not every every application has to be like 600 kilometers away, but that's an, a nice to have because uh, there are a lot of field stations that would benefit from this, you know, being able to transmit real time data, um, weather stations, uh, you know, ice thickness measurements, ice temperature, things like that. And I think that um, having, you know, having this capability could really expand the the science uh, happening down here in Antarctica. Um, I'm actually going to share this article with our research assistant at Crary Lab. Um, the, I had never heard of this before, um, and so it's it's fascinating that just the the advance in technology that can help with with research and things like that. Um, you know, I I I'd mentioned before that uh, you know we can't. You know, there are a lot of areas, especially at McMurdo, where we can't use conventional like Iridium satellite phones mm -hmm. because of the spurious transmissions and and how it could affect, uh, you know, the Starlink and the government satellites and, and the radio uh, radio experiments going on. But I think the the low power nature of Bluetooth could really be an advantage in, in those types of uh, scenarios, even just automatic tracking of vehicles when they leave the station to go 
to the airfield um, when the weather is not so great. You know, uh, you know, it, it, let's say the radio in, in the vehicle breaks, you know, and they can't call in while well, you could have a, a beacon or something on on the vehicle that could be tracked using this Bluetooth technology. I yeah. mean, that, that would, you know, that would be a safety uh, improvement. So I think there, I think if this pans out, I think there would be a lot of, uh, a lot of great applications just, just around here. Yeah. And, and it's going to take a couple of years for them to get enough satellites to provide continuous coverage for that sort of thing. Uh, but even before then, I, I, I absolutely could see, you know, uh, sensor, sensor stations that you want to put out for research away from from the McMurdo station itself um, wouldn't have to use as much power. They can store up their data and use Bluetooth uh, with, you know, maybe a little solar panel and a battery to to send the data up even in that two to three hour window that they have. So it does it does feel like an exciting thing that that makes more sensors, more places on Earth uh, a, able to communicate. Uh, and Antarctica is one of those places that, you know, doesn't have a lot of connections, uh, that, that you, that are wired, right? Like you're on a satellite internet connection right now. So satellite provision of, of Bluetooth, I think is, is really interesting. Yeah. And, and it, even with, you know, I just, you know, speaking of weather, I, I was talking before about how there's less resolution with weather forecasts down here because of the relative, mm -hmm. Uh, scarcity of weather stations compared to more populated areas. And I was just thinking every day they release a weather balloon. Um, you know, it's just a small weather balloon with sensors and things on it. I think that being able to place more permanent mm -hmm. uh, stations would help eliminate because that, that's a, you know, once that balloon pops, it falls into the ocean and, and that's a, that's a, a waste issue. And so if we could use technology to help eliminate, you know, even small amounts of, of waste and, and possible damage to the environment, then I think that would be a great uh, advancement as well. Well, we're going to talk a little bit with Craig about what's actually going on already right now, because there's a lot of interesting technology they're using at the moment. Uh, first, real quickly, I want to tell you about this week's top five. Top fives are only 60 seconds. Uh, they're, they're fast, they're fun. And this week, I'm counting down the top five music genres born from the internet. Uh, Roger went and researched what are those music genres that came up from Reddit, from message boards, from communities on the internet. Uh, you can catch that at Daily Tech News Show on TikTok, at DTNS Picks, DTNS P I X on Instagram, and YouTube at youtube.com slash Daily Tech News Show. As I mentioned last month, we heard from Craig about what internet connectivity is like at McMurdo Station down in Antarctica. That was an excerpt from the A Word with Tom Merritt podcast. Uh, today, we're excited that Craig is here live from Antarctica. Uh, and so we wanted to ask you some follow-up questions and, and put that internet connection uh, to the test. Uh, first, what's the most surprising thing about the internet quality that you're getting there? Are, are you surprised by it? I'm incredibly surprised. The fact that we can have a live conversation, uh, you know, to so many people is, it blows my mind. Like I had no idea that, that the Starlink would be this good. And it's, it's about 830 in the morning here. And so not a lot of people are up. It's, it's a day off uh, for most of the station. And so uh, the, the quality is, is astonishing um especially once i turned off my vpn you know when we were <laughs> recording <laughs> when we were recording the uh the uh the episode of award with tom Merritt, you know we were having some crunching issue crunchy uh, issues with the video mm -hmm. and so we had to turn the video off and then uh I, I realized i had my vpn off on so turning that off like everything is crystal clear and it's real time there's no latency and i that's the most fascinating thing to me is is being able to to speak in this manner so when you packed to go down there what kind of tech did you bring with you i brought uh so i brought my gaming laptop uh i brought my pixel 8 pro phone and i brought my uh ipad air i think it's a fourth generation so it's not like the newest one or anything like that um and then i brought uh extra cables i brought uh, a couple of power supplies um, my laptop came with a with a power brick, of course, but it can also be powered by USB-C uh, 
power delivery. So I have a couple of options to power my laptop. Um, but to for packing to come down here, I packed as if I was going on a long trip, uh, mm -hmm. which I am. Um, I know it sounds silly, <laughs> but but because you know, despite the exotic location, it's it's like packing for a long trip. You know, you make sure you have enough cables. You make sure that you have all of your adapters that you might need, and you try to minimize the adapters if you can. You know, try to get all on USB C if possible, because that's the, and you have you know, do you have easy an use. easy time powering everything when things have to be charged? Oh yeah, uh, there's I have outlets. In, you know, it's it's a standard like anywhere like, dorm room. So I've so I have outlets. I have uh, power strips. I have um, you know all kinds of things that you know it's it's a standard dorm room. Like you could transport this dorm room to almost any college campus, I think, and it would look familiar to those students. Um, so yeah, it's 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 very mundane in that way. I, well, you're the lead power plant mechanic, so you would know. But there's there's no worry about straining the the, the power system. No, there's uh, so we have more than enough capacity, even in the summertime when we have upwards up to a thousand people here. Um, there's plenty of power capacity. We can also share power with Scott Base. Uh, they're a co they're the New Zealand base. They're a couple miles away. They have uh, some generators that can add on to our combined electrical grid. Um, so there's not a concern of overloading, but there is a, a culture of uh, conservation. So uh, they they ask the people, you know, unplug things when they're not using them so you don't mm -hmm. have those vampire loads. Um, they ask that you don't just leave, you know, leave things on all the time. Uh, they, they ask that you don't, you know, run your faucet, for example, because we have to make all of our water using uh, reverse osmosis plants. So uh, there's a culture of conservation. Um, it, and at least in the winter, there's not a mindset of like, oh, we're going to overload everything. Uh, it's, but there is the conservation mindset and I'm not really sure in the summer, but the people that I talked to who are here for the summer, they, they didn't really have that issue either. So yeah. I, I have a feeling that a lot of the, you know, what they call hotel loads, which is like your, your lights and your computers and things like that. Uh, are relatively small compared to your larger loads like the the science and, and mm -hmm. you know the the galley and things you know commercial laundry and, and whatnot you you mentioned uh up to 1000 people being there in the summer at your base um i think a lot of people think of antarctica like oh i don't know there's maybe five scientists there and yeah, a lot right. of penguins and you know like <laughs> yeah. what's even happening down there can they survive do they have food um it's a pretty thriving little town i mean can you can you give us more of a sense of you know how how you think that this differs in you know the different seasons yeah um so in the winter uh we're more of caretakers of of the of the station so we're here to make sure that uh the station uh survives i guess for lack of a better word through the winter so that when the summer season comes around it's ready for that influx of scientists and and construction people and things like that um because right now we only have like two or three actual scientists on station the rest mm -hmm. of us are support staff in some regard so you know i'm in the power plant making electricity um and making water and, and things like that. We have uh, our carpenters and our utilities people who fix broken pipes and and make uh, you know make different things uh, around the station. But we're more in a caretaking role to make sure that the station uh, stays ready to go. So as soon as the scientists, you know, all the other scientists come in, they can start work almost immediately. Um, and all of the U.S. stations are year-round year stations, um, but other countries, they don't have year-round stations. They have uh, summer only. So when it gets close to the winter time, they, they winterize everything. You know, they drain out the water and they you know, put glycol in their pipes and they, they shut mm. down their generators and they basically leave it there. Uh, until yeah, it's like a the, hibernating uh, until the summer yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah and so they have to dig it out and and mm. that's very time consuming to gives a whole new definition to the phrase snowbird 
Yes. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's an extreme <laughs> version of a snow yeah. snow school, so, if you will. Bef- before we wrap up here, one last question. Uh, is there any tech you miss now that you've been there a little while? Um, I, I can't say that there is because one of the, one of the draws of coming here is you're, you're away from everybody, you know, you're away from a, a, a lot of that kind of thing. And, you know, even my, I've, you know, I brought my laptop with me, but I almost never use it. Uh, I use my phone for most stuff. Um, so I would say the thing, perhaps the thing that I miss the most and my wife has one and I declined to bring it was uh, like a nice uh, DSLR camera. Um, I, mm-hmm. I kind of wish that I had a nicer camera than the one on my phone. Uh, the Pixel 8 Pro fo- uh, camera is incredible. It, you know, I've, I can zoom up to 30 times and get, you know, pictures of penguins and seals and whatnot. But um, I do wish that I had a nice DSLR with a uh, with a nice um, you know tele you know telephoto lens I guess, yeah. but I'm not an expert. I would be teaching myself how to use it while I'm down here, so <laughs> that's that's why I didn't bring it because yeah. I don't know how to use that type of camera. So gotcha, gotcha. Uh, so I'd say oh. that's probably the the thing. Yeah. And then Nick with a C wants to know if he can see where you are on Google Maps. Oh yeah, if you just type in McMurdo Station Antarctica, it should it should pop right up. Should on pop Google right Maps. up. There you go. You can yeah. wave. I mean, I can. <laughs> and Craig, what is your dorm room number? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm in building 209. Right All right. Now, so zoom so. in till you find that okay. building. Okay. Now, you know. yeah. It's not like somebody's going to easily find you, you know, like just pop by <laughs> unexpectedly, right? <laughs> right. So. It's like, yeah, well, now I mean, that we could, know where Craig yeah. lives, let's just come on over for pizza. <laughs> you yeah. Know, that's easy. Well, well, and it is pizza. So pizza is Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday. That's nice. pizza day. So. That's pizza okay, day. so tomorrow yeah. we go. Yeah. Well, no, it's today for him because it's Saturday <laughs> oh, already. It's, to, it's today. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Shoot. And yeah, All I just right. double checked well, on, think about on Google Maps. Better. I just double checked on Google Maps. You type in McMurdo Station, and it's it pops right up. So fantastic. All right, we'll 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 see how what the navigation says and on getting to yeah. you and let you know our ETA. Yeah, get into a kayak and paddle yeah, down yeah. there. <laughs> uh, well, also, uh, what's been going on during today's show, Len Peralta has been drawing something to go along with our week of technology news. Len, what have you drawn? You know, um, Sarah had mentioned that in Ar- Antarctica, there is a lot of penguins. And uh, I this is my take. I think the reason why you've got such great internet is, of course, because of Tux. The Linux penguin who just is hanging around, oh, walking around so with you know, dis, dis, distributing IP addresses out there for everybody. So, uh, you know, I think uh, I think the penguin is uh, is out there from Batman, and also just you know, just Tux is walking around. And- That's beautiful. Yeah. Have you seen yeah. Tux, really Craig? Cool. <laughs> yeah, talk about um, not, not I like how Craig's like. I didn't want to say anything about Tux. <laughs> That's all. Yeah, this all no. Works. no. <laughs> no, I haven't seen him specifically, um, and I don't know that penguins can sit the way that he does. You know, because he sits with his legs yeah, out like right. this, and I haven't seen any that do that. They, it they would be either, easy to, they're, they're to, to identify him. Yeah, right, exactly. yeah. <laughs> well, this image is available right now at my Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Len. If you can back me at the DTNS lover level, you get it there right away, or you can go the old fashioned way. Go to the online store at lenperaltastore.com. Uh, order it there or commission me for something. You know, Mother's Day is coming up. Some grad stuff is coming up. So think about me when you're making your choices. Well, thank you as always, Len. And big, big thanks to you, Craig Porter, for being with us. Um, we were we were hoping your connection would work, and it did. Yay. It's awesome. Um, so fun to get some on-the-ground information from uh, where you are and what you're doing. Let folks know where they can keep up with you. Sure. Well, I have a website, uh, djfission.com. That's fission with two S's. Um, you know, in, in case you didn't listen to Word with Tom Merritt, that's my DJ name down here uh, while I'm on the radio on Tuesday nights. Um, but that goes to all my social medias and Instagram and, and things like that. Um, also, I, I'm not a spokesperson for the United States Antarctic Program, and I don't speak for them. My opinions are my own, but 
if you're interested in learning more about Antarctica and the science of what's going on down here, and if you're interested in looking for a, a job with USAP, uh, that's all at usap.gov. Excellent. Uh, patrons, stick around for the extended show, Good Day Internet. We're obviously going to keep talking to, to Craig about Antarctica, but it's also Friday. Uh, so Roger prepared some very special GDI debates uh, for us to have. Uh, some of them bear uh, very closely on, you know, what kind of technology could be a replacement for human contact, something that, you know, maybe when you're in a limited situation like Craig is in, uh, you'd have an opinion on. So stick around for that. You can also catch our show live Monday through Friday. We're live at 4 p.m. Eastern, which is 2000 UTC. And you can find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. We are back on Monday with Justin Robert Young joining us again. Hope you have a great weekend, everybody. This week's episodes of Daily Tech News Show were created by the following people. Host, producer, and writer, Tom Merritt. Host, producer, and writer, Sarah Lane. Executive producer and booker, Roger Chang. Producer, writer, and co-host, Rob Dunwood. Video producer, Joe Kuntz. Producer at large, Anthony Lemos. Spanish language host, writer, and producer, Dan Campos. Science correspondent, Dr. Nikki Ackermans. Social media producer and moderator, Zoe Detterding. Our mods, Beatmaster, W. Scottis One, BioCow, Captain Kipper, Steve Guadarrama, Paul Reese, Matthew J. Stevens, AKA Gadget Virtuoso, and JD Galloway. Mod and video hosting by Dan Christensen. Music and art provided by Martin Bell, Dan Luters, Mustafa A, Acast, and Len Peralta. Live art performed by Len Peralta. Acast ad support from Tatiana Matias. Patreon support from Tom McNeil. Contributors for this week's shows included Scott Johnson and Justin Robert Young. And our guests this week were Brian Ibbett, Eileen Rivera, Michelle Rahman, and Craig Porter. Thanks to all the patrons who make the show possible. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>